professor Himadri Sharma. Today we are going to present our paper with my co-author Manisha Talukdar uh, entitled with Strategic Code of Arthashastra Kautilya Synthesis of Vedic Warfare in Contemporary Diplomacy and Peacemaking. Before starting, uh, myself, Himadri Sharma and Manisha Talukdar, we both are uh, doing our PhD research work in the Department of Sanskrit, Kahati University, Assam, India. So now we are going to share our screen with you. Here is our title. And this is the outline of our paper, which basically uh, abstract methods and scopes, introduction, warfare in Vedic era, the causes of war in Vedic period, the warfare ethics in the Vedas, the diplomatic concord of Kautilya's Arthashastra, contemporary global peacemaking and Arthashastra, and in the end, the conclusion part. Here is the uh, abstract methodology and the scope part of our paper. Uh, coming to the introduction part, we all know there are four Vedas texts along with their particular Vedangas, Aranyakas, Upanishads, and Brahmanas. The Vedas are Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, and Atharva Veda. The warfare and, of ancient India can be traced in these Vedic texts, which later develop in the Smriti literature like Manu Smriti, Arthashastra, and throughout the chapters of epics like Ramayana, Mahabharata, etc. Uh, coming to the point of Arthashastra, in the Arthashastra of Kautilya, peace is described as the crucial element for the prosperity and the security of a state. This great treatise was written in Sanskrit language with the essence of political science related to statecraft, the economic strategies, and the military sequences, which is suitable to maintain both internal and external stability of a state. The author, authorship of this Arthashastra is solely go to Kautilya, who is also known as Vishnu Gupta and Janakya. This book was composed by him uh, in between 2nd century BC to 3rd century BC. Our next point is warfare in Vedic era. We are the point warfare in Vedic era. In the Vedic era, three primary types of warfare can be identified, for example, land warfare, naval warfare, and aerial warfare. Land warfare refers to military operations and combat uh, that take place on land. That is the river banks were often selected for battle. This warfare is often the uh, most uh, decisive form of warfare as control of land, uh, population centers, and strategic positions. Uh, naval warfare refers to military operations and combat conducted at sea. In this warfare involving ships, uh, submarines, and aircrafts. Aerial warfare involving aircraft such as fighter jets, bombers, airborne vehicles, etc. These warfares achieving and maintaining control of the air, airspace uh, above the battlefield. In the Vedic era, the classifications of wars into two primary types, for example, Dharmayutha and Putayutha. Dharmayutha refers to a war uh, that is uh, fought in accordance uh, with dharma or moral and ethical principles. Dharma means the Kshatra Dharma or the law of kings or warriors. In the Gita, war is regarded as the primary duty of the Kshatriya. Dharmyadhi, Yudha, Sreyu, Anyat, Kshatriya, Shana, Vidyate. Uta Yudha considered a unrighteous or dishonest war. Uh, the goal is to win by any means necessary without regard for uh, moral principles. The next point is the causes of war in Vedic period. In the Vedic period, political issues were indeed a significant cause of warfare. This conflict shaped the social and political landscape of the Vedic civilization, uh, leading to the rise and fall of various uh, tribes and kingdoms. The concept of achieving the take of Sarvabhuma or Sar uh, Sakrabartin is the most powerful political cause of war. Uh, Sarvabhuma means universal sovereign that is ruler of the entire world. Sarvabhuma rulers means who has the authority over all lands, not just a single kingdom or region. Sakrabarti is an ideal king who rules over the entire earth. Uh, psychological factor also plays a significant role uh, in the causation of war. Uh, understanding the psychological uh, factors can help in addressing the root causes of uh, conflicts and working towards more effective peace building strategies. The next point uh, is uh, the warfare ethics in the Vedas. Uh, in the Vedic period, only equals should fight with each other uh, as an uh, opposition. This idea was rooted in the concept of dharma or kshatriya dharma. It was considered both ethical and honorable for a warrior. That means heroes should heroes, uh, men should men, etc. in the battlefield. 
In ancient India Vedic period, uh, it was indeed a customary practice for warriors to ensure the safety of their families, especially during times of war. The Bodhana Dharmasutra, one of the ancient Indian texts, states the duties and laws for different classes of society include specific ethical uh, guidelines for uh, conduct in warfare. The ethical of in ancient India, it is often stated that killing uh, or injuring enemies on the battlefield is not considered uh, as a sin. Uh, the next point is that the concord of Kotila in Arthasastra. Coming to the point of diplomatic concord of Kautilya Arthashastra, in international relations, diplomacy refers to the practice of managing and conducting negotiations between representatives of different countries. So, there are two types of basic uh, concepts that discussed by Kautilya in his Arthashastra. In this regard, they, they are Upaya Chatrishtayas, that is Sama, Dana, Danda, and Veda, and the Sadguinda Niki, that is Sandhi, Vigraha, Asana, Yana, Samsraya, and Dwaiti Bhava. Among the Upayasatustrayas are four kinds of expedients. Saturiya or the fourth one is always considered as the extreme means to be followed only when there is no way of applying the other three, that is Sama, Dana, and Veda. These four strategies are used to manage both internal and the external affairs, ensuring the stability and securing of the state. According to the Arthashastra of Kotilla, in the sixth chapter, Kotilla mentioned that Sama Bhyaya Mayur Yonihi. That means the sixfold policy is the sama vyayama yur yonihi. Here, vyayama or industry is nothing but the efforts of, to attain the results of works undertaken. On the other hand, absence of any disturbances to the enjoyment of the achieved result from works is peace. Now, coming to the point of sadguinyaniti, that is sandhi, vigraha, asana, yana, samsraya, and dwaiti bhava. This sadguinyaniti and the upaya are interconnected. For example, the sama and dhamma can be used to negotiate peace treaties, that is sandhi, and also in the alliances, that is samsraya. Again, the veda can be employed in vigraha, that is to create divisions within enemy ranks. Uh, lastly, the danda is directly related to yana, that is the use of force, aligning with the preparation of for war or in the vigraha, that is in the actual warfare. Kotilya said that friends of foreign king can be won over with persuasion and rewards, that is sama and dana. In contrast, stubborn enemies can be dealt with by creating discord, making threats, and highlighting their leader's flaws. Uh, he also confessed that honors and rewards shall be conferred upon those that are contended while uh, those that are disaffected shall be brought round by consolation, by gifts, or by dissension, uh, or by punishment. Now, coming to the point of contemporary global peacemaking and the discussion of Kotilya Artha Sastra, there are three points basically, Sandhi, Samsraya, and Asana, which are more beneficial than the other three uh, policies that comes under the six pole policies that are Yana, Vigraha, and Dwati Bhava. Uh, coming to the point of Sandhi, the Sandhi is a system related to treaty which is considered as the frankest and widely open procedure in the realm of diplomacy. There are basically five ways through which the Sandhis can be made as follows. One is Mitra Sandhi, Hiranya Sandhi, Bhumi Sandhi, Anabhasita Sandhi and the Karma Sandhi. Uh, in the uh, chapter, in the chapter in, of 7 Adhikarana, Kotilya mentioned that Sandhi is important more than war because an operation against a superior is like a foot soldier opposing an elephant, and to make war against an equal is like the collision of unbaked mud vessels against each other, causing mutual destruction. He also confessed that it is effective to make treaties with an inferior, one like the collision of a stone with a mud vessel. Some scholars stated that there are two types of Sandhi. One is Chala Sandhi, that is temporary, and one is Thavara Sandhi. But Kotila mentioned that Honesty is the best policy in making the Sandhis because in Arthasastra we can found that at ancient times honest kings make their agreements of peace with just declaring that Samhitasma, that is, we have joined in peace. Uh, there are uh, four kinds of stages in the Sandhis. They are Akrita Sikrisa, Krita Sleshanam, Krita Vidushanam, and Avasirna Kriya. The first one is which is specific and of the peace. Krita Sleshanam is with some specific terms and condition of peace. 
Krita Vidushanam is when the Sandhi is broken through the agency of spice. And the last one is on a promise to observe the treaty strictly, a restoration of peace through a reconciliation is effected. Then coming to the point of samsraya, it was said in the Artha Shastra that pararpanam samsraya and sakti hinaha samsrayeta. This is a treaty to secure the state by a king, especially seeking support from the elites when he feels that he is unable to uh, secure his internet and external security this treaty or support seeking is only done when it emerges in the state affairs that the king feels like he has not the needed capability to defend his kingdom all alone against a possible attack of enemy the alliance should be done only when with the ruler of superior power whom the state authority or king considers as genuine and friendly lastly coming to the point of asana this tactic of diplomacy is commonly considered as the neutral state where the state authority holds a post of against and against as enemy. This asana can be uh, done by the Madhyama king and the Udasana king. This strategy is of 10 kinds, basically Swasthana, Upeksha, Margarodha, Durga Saitya, Rastra Vikarana, Ramaniya, Nikatasana, Durga Marga, Dura Marga, Pradopasana, and lastly Paradhina. Coming to the point of conclusion, revisiting the history even presently, we are witnessing the devastating consequences of wars which not only impact in the involved countries but also in the state of global stability. We are witnessing the wars like Ukraine or and Russia in the wars of Gaza, but the Peace Building Commission of United Nations, we can see that they recognize that conflict prevention as a part of sustaining peace requires a cross pillar approach and reaffirms that development, peace and security and human rights are interlinked and mutually reinforced. Even in the recent visit to Ukraine, uh, Pradhan Mantri Narendra Modi of Bharat stated firmly that the solution will not come out of the battlefield. Accordingly, Kotilla in his Arthashastra said, when and the equal amount of advantages can be derivable from peace and war. One should always prefer peace over war. Also, the word peace is not a concrete formula that we can use word by word as stated by Cotillia and other diplomats like him. But depending on the present day scenario, we can at least try to obey the warfare ethics professionally and can step forward to negotiate the peace treaties by extracting the cause of violence and promote long term stability either by Sandhi or by Samsraya to build a better and sustainable global peace for the upcoming generation where they can feel, stay and utter the oneness of Vasudheva Kutumbakam. Dhanabadaha.